Hello my friends and welcome back. So I'm rounding off this beautiful evening by getting some crops planted out. I'm gonna be putting in some pole beans and fava beans, two of the easiest, most rewarding crops to grow in my opinion. One of the greatest things about it is that once you get going with these crops, you can then begin to save your own seed and never have to buy it again. That's where I'm at at this point. I've got both fava bean, also known as broad bean, and some pole beans, some rattlesnake beans that I'm gonna be planting that were collected from my garden last year and I've got an abundance of it. So I'll be able to plant year after year and continually collect some of those seeds. So I'll be utilizing this trellis here to grow my pole beans up. Now the rattlesnake bean, they're a vigorous grower. They can grow about 10 feet tall. So they'll wind themselves all the way up and perhaps over this trellis here. And by the way, I've had a few people come and ask me exactly what is this metal trellis I'm using. And it's a cattle panel is what it's called. And you can pick them up at Lowe's, oftentimes carries them, tractor supply and animal feed stores often have them as well. But they're durable, they're versatile, they're gonna last you a lifetime. And as you can see here, what I did is I created an arched growing area so I can utilize the airspace in my garden to grow more food. But you could turn these into a greenhouse or you could cover it with some shade cloth to get some seeds going when it starts heating up. So there's a lot of things that you can do with it. And what I really like about these cattle panels versus some of the other panels that are out there is that these have large holes so you can easily reach in and grab produce. I plan on doing some Armenian cucumbers up these trellises as well as some calabash gourd and it's nice to be able to reach through and grab things. The smaller squares are harder to do that with. But back to the peas and beans. There's something very important that I recommend everyone do before planting out peas, beans, lentils, vetch and that is to inoculate. Now, I've been an advocate for this and I've spoken on it in the past, but not everyone has experience. There's a lot of new subscribers to the channel. And so I just want to reiterate some of these things that I do year after year. So here we've got the fava bean and here we've got some of the pole beans. And what I did is I created a little slurry. It's actually a little thin to be a slurry, but I added in some inoculant. And you want to let that sit for a few minutes to an hour, even overnight, but you don't want to let it sit for more than 24 hours before you plant. Otherwise, you're going to lose the potency of the inoculant. So what is the inoculant? It's a rhizobium bacteria. So what's the real benefit? What are we accomplishing by inoculating these crops before we plant them in the ground? Well, this rhizobium bacteria has a symbiotic relationship with these host plants, the roots on these plants. What it allows is for the atmospheric nitrogen to be taken up and converted into nitrogen into the soil. And it does that by creating these little nitrogen root nodules on the plants. And not only will it feed the plants themselves, but oftentimes people will actually chop these crops down like the fava bean before they begin to flower and produce pods to allow those nitrogen root nodules to fall off and feed surrounding plants. But it really does work. Besides that, it's going to increase your seed germination rate. It's also gonna give you a more resilient plant, a healthier plant, which in turn means that you're gonna have a more resilient pest and disease resistant plant. So it's definitely worth the investment. This inoculant is, is pretty cheap. You can buy it in bulk. But what I recommend for backyard gardeners like myself is to not buy too much, just buy what you need for that season because it is a living bacteria and it has an expiration date. So if you do have more than what you're using on your first round of crops, if you're planting in succession, then you're gonna to wanna to store it in a cool, dark place until you use the rest of it up. A little bit more information again on the rattlesnake bean. Like I said, it's a vigorous grower, but they're very delicious to eat fresh, especially when you harvest them early when they're still tender. But you can allow them to mature and you can collect them as a dry bean as well, great for chilies and such. But either way, um, you can harvest them early, you can can them, you can freeze them for later usage. And if you got them as a dry bean, you can just jar them up and use them when you need to. Now the fava bean, also known as broad bean, is a delicious crop. You can eat the leaves, you can eat the flowers, you can eat the growth tips, you can eat the young pods, and just like with the pole beans, you can allow them to dry out and have a dry bean that you can make chilies and such out of. I even produced a video in the past where I shared with you how I made a fava bean chili using the fresher green bean inside before it had gotten dry and it was absolutely delicious. Okay, so this has been soaking for a little over an hour. That's fine. And I'm gonna get to planting now. So I'm gonna wear some gloves for this. Just makes it a bit cleaner to work with. So like I mentioned, I'm gonna be growing these pole beans up this trellis. 
right in front of it, I'm going to do a whole bunch of the fava bean. And I'll probably end up planting other things in between the fava as well and turning a bunch of these plants into a living mulch, which is what I did last year. It worked out very well. So I've got some loose topsoil here that I put on this bed. So there's really no need for me to have to dig in to plant these. So I'm just going to grab the seeds and just press them in. As I'm doing this, I'm kind of grasping the seed so that it's not just all rubbing off as I'm sticking the seed down into the soil. And I'm not even too worried about spacing with the fava bean. But you can aim for about a three to six inch spacing. Now depending on where you live, this would be fava bean season coming up towards spring here. In more temperate climates, you can do successive planting. You can plant in the spring, you can plant in the fall, and have healthy plants already emerging. At this time, we've got fava beans growing up throughout the garden as volunteers. I didn't do any seeding this fall. So these favas you see me planting here, these were a special variety. And when I got them, they came in a pack of five. I believe it was five. I had two different types. And now I've got literally hundreds, if not thousands, every year to plant just from those five seeds. That's how abundant this plant is. The first year we didn't harvest any of the seeds for eating. We just harvested them for the seed crop. But there's really no need, honestly, to get anything special unless you just want to have more of a rare bean that other people don't have. You can actually go to even your health food stores and get the fava beans out of the bin in bulk for pennies on the dollar really. And you might have better luck finding bulk supplies of fava bean if you do a search for broad bean rather than fava bean. But give it a go. Not only is it a delicious plant and a nitrogen fixer for the garden and a great living mulch, meaning it grows nice greenery that can then just be chopped and dropped on the soil surface or you can literally flop the plant over and use it to help to protect the soil. You know, some of these larger seeds like this are fun to get the kids involved. If you got kids that are interested in, in gardening, wondering what you're doing out there, get them involved in planting some of these larger seeds like fava beans, pole beans, because they're pretty hard to mess up. You just stick them in the ground, they sprout pretty quickly. And in the case of pole beans, you can get really creative with that and build like a TP trellis or something. Anyway, just a thought. It's never too early to start teaching the younger generation about growing your own food and how the life cycle works and basically just where food comes from. Look at this beautiful volunteer green. I gotta pull this leaf off. It's huge. I'm gonna include this in my dinner tonight. So here are some of those volunteer favas popping up that I was talking about. And we got Matilda Jean on guard. And here's some more I uncovered yesterday when I was taking off some of the lower branches on this cardoon. Makes a wonderful mulch plant by the way, chop and drop. I think I'll plug some in around this new fig tree planting here. Now, if you're planting in harder soil, you're gonna to wanna to get one of these. The Hori Hori, one of my absolute favorite gardening tools. Just very strong metal here with a serrated edge. It's got a metal tang that goes down into the handle. Very strong and easy to just pop a little crevice in the soil and, and throw your seed in. So consider getting one of these if you haven't already. So I found another good spot for the fava bean right in front of this pluot tree here. And you can see we've got some comfrey coming back up. We got some horseradish here. Then we got some open space. Just pry open some spots here and put a little patch of fava in.
All right, now for the pole beans. You're just going to want to make a little trench. And we'll just space these out every couple inches or so. Another thing worth mentioning with this inoculant is that you cannot overdo it. So, you know, if you're only going to do one application and you got a little small bag of this stuff, might as well just use it all. Also, it is worth mentioning that I am planting a bit early this season. You definitely don't want to risk planting crops out and then have a freeze come in and kill your little sprouts or seedlings popping up. So. Um, there's a little bit of a risk, but I can easily protect these seeds where they're at with a little bit of drop cloth or what have you. Um, generally, you want to plant these out a couple weeks before your last frost date, which for us is almost a month away. But we have had a very mild winter this year. So that's it, guys. Easy as one, two, three. And we've got some abundant food crops in the ground ready to go. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited for this upcoming season. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be full of abundance and you and me let's grow the best gardens we've ever had in our life this year what do you say so with that if you found this video helpful or entertaining in some way i sure would appreciate it if you smash the like button if you haven't already consider subscribing to the channel new uploads every week sometimes every day and i'm always sharing with you all the different things growing on around here so with that have yourself a good rest of the night until next time this is dan from plantabundance.com take care i'll be talking to you again soon look at these birds They love these tall goji berries.